What up, it's Dan here. In this video, I'm gonna show you how to make all of your songs sound as good as they possibly can. Now, all of the things I'm gonna say are universal. They work for every production, in any software, using any instruments, any sound that you could possibly think of. But before I get into it, I need you all to realize and understand one thing. Every piece of music that's ever been recorded, every audio recording, exists in three dimensions, just like everything else in the world. The top to bottom length, the side to side width, and the back to front depth. Now, each of these dimensions corresponds to a technique in audio production, and the key is to make sure that every sound that you have None of them are on top of each other. They're, they're spread out. They're not going over each other and overlapping. That is how you make everything sound good and crisp. And I'm gonna show you how. first one that I'm going to talk about is something that you probably already know a little bit about, and that's volume. Volume is the back to front dimension. Uh, basically, something that's lowered in volume will sound really far away, while something loud is going to sound close to you. It's going to sound like it's in your face. So when you're mixing a song, you don't want things to be exactly equal volume. If you have a guitar part going on, you don't want it to be exactly as loud as the vocals are, or it's all going to mush together, and you're not really going to be able to hear the differences in the separation between it. I'm going to go ahead and start talking about the second dimension now, because it's very closely related to how you would use volume in a song, and it's kind of hard to talk about how to use volume correctly without also talking about panning. Panning is the left to right dimension. So what a lot of people like to do is if they want something to sound thick, they'll record two tracks of it and put them all the way to the left and all the way to the right using panning. Um, by doing that, I mean all the way in the left ear or all the way in the right ear. Now, the important thing with this is that you can use things that are similar volumes if they're in different ears, if they're on different parts of the left to right spectrum. You can have a guitar over here that's just as loud as a keyboard over here as long as it's separate, okay? If you have them both right here at the same volume, it's gonna sound bad. But if you separate it out, it's gonna sound really thick and really nice. The most important thing about volume and panning is that you want the song to be balanced. You don't want all this stuff going on over in the left ear and nothing's happening in the right ear, all right? Even if you have the same amount of tracks in both ears, but one side is a lot louder than the other, it's gonna feel weird when you're listening to it. You'll have your headphones in and it's gonna seem like all of this is going on over here, but this side is neglected. That's not what you want. You want everything to be pretty much even between two sides. If you have something all the way to the left, then you want to have something else all the way to the right at a similar volume. If you have something kind of in the middle of the left, you want something similar to that in the middle of the right at around the same volume so that nothing sticks out too much and it pretty much feels even when you're listening to it through headphones. So far, I haven't talked about anything too crazy. Uh, you know, typically there's one pan knob per track and there's one volume knob per track. So it's really easy to put them where you want to put them. Where it gets really, um, I don't want to say complicated because it's not that complicated once you understand what you're doing. Where it gets more in depth is the uh, bottom to top aspect of it. And the way that you mess with that is EQ, or equalization. EQ is all about the different frequencies that you have in any given track 
you know, the high frequencies and the low frequencies. Uh, but it's very visual. It's something that makes a lot more sense if you can see rather than just me talk about it. So I'm going to go ahead and switch to my phone so you can see on GarageBand what I'm actually talking about with EQ. So you'll probably understand it better. What's up, everybody? Welcome to my phone. Good to have you here. It's going to be a great time. So to show you all the EQ, I'm going to use my first song that I made totally in GarageBand so you can see exactly what I did with it. And I'll post a link in the description so you can hear what the full song sounds like when it's done. So we'll go ahead and open it here. I'm going to start with the drums, just do them by himself so that all the other stuff doesn't get in the way. What you want to do is go to track controls, plugins and EQ, visual EQ. So, whoa, that's not the drums. That's the drums. Okay, so you want to open the EQ. Now, this is what it looks like in GarageBand, but in any audio production software, there should be something that looks pretty similar. It's going to look like this. You can see the EQ on a spectrum, and down here you have the analyzer, which helps you to actually see what the frequencies look like. So, you turn that on and you can see exactly where the frequencies are in the track. Now I put the bass drum boosted right here. So if you take it away, you can tell that it sounds a lot more flat and not as good. So you wanna raise it until the bass drum is snapping, right? The important thing is to keep the area that you boost compact. The reason these are here is because you don't wanna boost too much put them all the way over here it doesn't sound as good because everything is not really boosted but it's not being taken away where it should be the reason that you want to take it away a little bit where it's not boosted is because that's where all the other tracks are going to be you know up here or down here so we can see in the bass that it's lowered where the drums were, but it's boosted in the frequencies below that. And that's what really gives that thick bass sound. So together, you can hear both the snappiness of the bass drum and the low rumble of the bass, but it's not stepping on each other's toes. And this is what it sounds like. So that's basically what you want to do for every single instrument. Um, you can see here the keyboards are boost boosted a little more in the middle because down here it's taken away where the drums and the bass are and it's taken away up here where the lead instruments are going to be. So if you go to a lead instrument like the lead guitar over here, you can see that it's boosted in the highest frequencies because you want it to stand out. You want it to be noticeable when it comes in. And all the other low frequencies where everything else would be, where the keyboards, the drum, the bass is, that's all lowered. So everything should have its own place. All of these things, the EQ, the bass, or sorry, the EQ, the panning, the volume, they're all going together. So you can see throughout the song, they're all in different places. The volume, some tracks all the way down there. Some of them are all the way up here. On some of them, the panning is pretty much in the middle. Some of them, it's a little bit to the left. Same thing on the right to equal it out. Uh, that one is actually right in the middle. That's a little bit to the right. A little way, actually, pff, way more to the right. Um, and as you go down, you can see that it's all different. Most of them aren't going to be exactly the same. The only exceptions are going to be really the drums and the bass should be pretty much dead set in the middle. Um, those are going to obviously be lower, so they're going to take up everything in the middle. And if you do want to put something in the middle that's higher, you can do that. Just make sure, again, that in the EQ it's not taking up any of this low space where the drums and the bass are. So as long as you make sure that everything has its own room, its own space, everything is gonna sound really good.
So that's pretty much it. I could have talked about all these things a lot more, but I wanted to keep it short because nobody likes super long videos for no reason. Uh, but you know, basically, every song, three dimensions, the volume is the depth, the width is the panning, and the length is the EQ. If there's anything you want to know more about from this video, go ahead and let me know in the comments. If there's any videos that you want me to make about any topic in music in general that you want to know more about, let me know in the comments. And if you haven't already, go ahead and click subscribe. I'll see you guys soon.